part of my formative experience here, right early on, I had started as, you know, playing Columbia in 2014, after I'd played in 2013 in that tape ball league. And one of the first celebrities I met in cricket was Steve Buckner, because Steve Buckner is still an umpire in New York City. He lives in the Bronx or Mount Vernon in New York, and he's still an umpire. And he wanders around Van Cortland Park in the Bronx on a Saturday and a Sunday, and people take pictures with him. Who is this guy? What is he doing here? I, you know, I can barely understand what he's saying. He's moving at two miles an hour. This is the most famous umpire. That's hilarious. That's this seems like a this seems like a job for me. You'll see my sort of crickety background here. Um, I have a picture of Steve up there that I've had since about that time in 2014, but I keep it up there because when I have umpire meetings like this, sometimes he's in them and I don't want him to see his own picture in my background. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. Columbia, what you're saying is, I mean, a hundred percent true. People may or may not believe this if they're not in and around the New York city cricket scene, but I've seen Steve Buckner at Van Cortland Park, just like you said, in the Bronx, in Van Cortland Park, for people who are not aware, it's the biggest cricket facility in New York City. It may even be the biggest cricket facility in America. It's got nine, it used to have 13 cricket fields yeah. all on one site. And then down. about 10 years or so ago, they went through a large scale renovation to the park where they tried to make the fields a bit nicer, but in the process of making the fields nicer, they had to shrink the space in mm -hmm. order to focus the, mm -hmm. the renovations to Im improve the remaining fields. So I think it went from 13 to nine mm -hmm. in terms of cricket fields. Now, Bank Coral Park is a huge park. You've got a golf course, you've got horse riding stables. There's, there's when you play at Van Cortland Park and you get an unfiring assignment, there's the Van Cortland Stables ground, and then there's VCP one, VCP three, mm. VCP five. So if you're at the stables ground, it's, it's by horse stables. There's an actual horse stables that you got to go a bit further. Beautiful, beyond. love that ground. The normal, it's a very nice ground, absolutely. You've got golf course, you've got baseball fields, you've got soccer fields that are near the cricket fields. It's a huge park in the Bronx, and they've had cricket there for. God knows how long you you could tell me you I'm sure you know 170 some years I think uh, the At least 100. stables yeah the stables there I think is only seven ten years younger than Staten Island's ground is um, mm -hmm. and I think it's three years ago now I'm not sure that they're playing at stables any year anymore three years ago they built a children's playground on part of that piece of land and I terrible. don't know that I love that ground it was so fun it's playing there. yeah. That's where I got arrested. Yeah, it's oh, that's well. We'll get to the rest story in a bit, but yeah, yeah the stables ground. I think what is it like two twenty four or two forty four? What? What's... Yeah, it's up. It's the uh, stables is up like two sixty. So Van Cortland is at two forty four, and yeah, then yeah, stables okay. is about two sixty. Stables is twenty bucks. Yeah, it's yeah, 20 bucks or so further north. But yeah, Steve, Steve Buckner during a set of USA cricket trials that were held in our ICC Americas trials in twenty sixteen. Mm -hmm. Steve Buckner and and I think twenty eighteen too. I can't remember, but. Yeah, Steve Buckner is just wandering around umpiring some other matches that were taking mm -hmm. place. And I believe he's, and you confirmed this, I believe he, he does uh, NYPSAL umpiring he as does. well. He does, yeah. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of umpiring in the city, whether it's PSAL or the Commonwealth League or other leagues. He's, he's, yeah, mm -hmm. you've got this guy who's stood in World Cup finals and God knows how many test matches and internationals. And he's just, he's just around. Of, just around New York cricket community now. He's so you said he lives in lives in the Bronx, lives in Mount Vernon. Um, and it's for so for him to come to Van Cortland Park, it's a very short journey for him to come. Yeah. And I believe the reason why he's there is he's he's got family, his sister or somebody else who's a family relative who had been yeah. a long time resident in New York. And so mm -hmm. when he retired from being uh, on the circuit in the ICC circuit, instead of staying in Jamaica, he came to New York to be with his relatives and family in, in New York City. So that's why he's there. Um, but he still, yeah, he still referees high school soccer games too. There you go. I, I, I don't know how he moves up and down the field, uh, but <laughs> like he's, he's incredible. I did seven or eight games with him last year on the Randall's Island pitch uh, between Manhattan and Queens, which is oh, a great yeah. little pitch. Right there. Um, it's, and you, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's well, the, the view, you've got the bridge kind of overhanging one, one side of the ground. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some incredible facilities for soccer and for rugby and for other stuff on Randall's Island. It's a, it's a huge, again, sports complex. And then the cricket field 
it almost feels misplaced because you've got so many other brilliantly maintained facilities there, and the cricket one is kind of probably the least well maintained, but it's still there. And you've got this, you go over what used to be the Triborough Bridge. What are they? Mm-hmm. It's the RFK Bridge. RFK, right? yeah. yeah. And um, that's how you get onto Randall's Island. And so you, you pass Icon mm-hmm. uh, Stadium, the track complex, and this incredible area for all these different sports. Cricket mm-hmm. is a part of it. And yeah, it's a part of it. You can see Steve Buckner. You can see Brian Kane and Steve Buckner. But Steve Me Buckner, and Steve Buckner take the bus in together, you know, because neither of us can afford cars. We both take the bus in from Manhattan at the same time to make sure we get to the game on time. But he's <laughs> it's good, there. It's a good I mean, one. He's there. It's incredible. Believe it or not, he's there. So uh, cricket in America, you've experienced it. I've experienced it. It'll throw up some surprising names in places where yeah. you might least expect it. And there's no element of being too big or too proud to umpire in local cricket. You mm-hmm. talk to Steve Buckner and, and you ask him, why are you umpiring get matches? Because I want to earn $120. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, That'll what, be me also at 80. What a stupid results, question. So, why yeah. are you why <laughs> why wouldn't I am <laughs> like, oh, but you're a test umpire. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not a test umpire anymore. So I need to continue earning money. This is yeah. how I'm earning money. Like, what did you expect me to do? That's his very matter of fact answer, if you ask him. And yeah, so he's, you know, in his 70s now, I believe, but yeah. he's uh, still very active and engaged in terms of umpiring locally. And, mm-hmm. and you've been a part of that firsthand alongside him standing in matches. So, so tell us about that. The fact that here you are, you've only been introduced into the umpiring aspects of cricket basically mm-hmm. since 2014, 2015. Mm-hmm. And he talked about doing the online Cricket Australia course to, to get certified through Cricket Australia. And you, you've also done, looking at your LinkedIn profile, you've, you've done West Indies Cricket Umpires Association exam. There's a USA Cricket Umpires Association that, believe it or not, again, for people who might not be aware, there is a, indeed a USA Cricket Umpires Association, there USA is. CUA. It's been around for a very long time. And so they have their set of courses and way that they certify mm-hmm. umpires that are mm-hmm. At all around America. They're the ones who have been doing that for a long time, but now USA Cricket has their own umpiring course. You've you've also done an ECB accreditation course. Mm-hmm. So for somebody who only really got involved eight years ago in terms of the umpiring scene and as somebody who didn't grow up around cricket to now in less than a decade, being able to stand with somebody who's a legend of umpiring circles around the world in international cricket, Steve Buckner. What is that experience like for you? It's incredibly bizarre to find that each step is slightly more complicated and slightly more convoluted than the step before it. So becoming an umpire in the Commonwealth Cricket League is easy. You tell Leslie that you want to be an umpire and he goes, oh, thank you. Please, we need help. (laughs) <laughs> and he sticks you on a field two days later, even though he's never asked you if you've ever read the rules. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter yeah. to him. Just, just, just do it. And that's, that's also part of why I started uh, umpiring as well, because cricket equipment is expensive and I needed to play on, I needed to umpire on Sundays so that I could play for my team on, so I could afford to play for my team on Saturdays and hold down a job the rest of the week. You know? well, well, I got, <laughs> I just got in here quick. The full season I did, the first full season I did umpiring in the cricket league of New Jersey. I, I was astounded because, again, I had this vision in my head. You see these officials in the NFL, NHL, MLB, very, very rigorous process, lots of training, years of training. you got to start a you know, high school football, high school umpiring, work through it to college. And then just like, just like the players, you got to mm-hmm. start at high school officiating, then college officiating. If you are observed to be performing well enough and diligent enough and competent enough, then you may get opportunities to be an official at the professional level, mm-hmm. professional leagues. So I'm in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I got to take this very seriously. And uh, CLNJ, there was a pre-season umpiring certification course. And mm-hmm. the email said, mandatory, in order to umpire games in this league, mandatory, you must attend this umpire's training session or else you will not be able to be scheduled for games. And I missed it. I forget what happened if I was overseas covering um, an event that USA was participating in or if I was sick, something happened that came up and I was not able to attend the one mandatory date that said you have to attend 
and I emailed the the person in charge of umpire uh, coordinators and umpiring assignments. And I said, I'm, I'm really, really sorry. I can't believe I missed this, um, but I'm desperate to umpire. Like, is there any way I can take a makeup course and um, still be able to officiate? Because I really would like to umpire this year. And he was just like, oh, we're short of umpires. So like, you can do this game and start <laughs> off. Boom. Like, yeah, he started me in, so at the time there was three divisions. It was division A, B, and C, but he started me in division C just mm-hmm. to get my feet wet. But within, I think three weeks, by week three, I was umpiring Division A. A, because the standard of umpiring was so poor that I shut up immediately into the A division. I was in demand, like word spread quickly, not, not to like big myself over sound arrogant, but like just doing the basics, just showing basic competency is something that is severely lacking in a lot of the local league umpiring. So if you, yeah. if you can do the fundamentals and just be basic and disciplined in giving signals you know, some, some of the teams would be impressed that like, I, I knew the difference between a leg by and a buy and when to signal leg by and when to signal by and subtle things like that. You think like, that's not a big deal, but like, oh, you know, the other umpires don't do that. You know, some umpires, they just, they just never signal it by. So they just, everything is a run. If it comes mm-hmm. off the pads. If it comes, if it goes by the keeper, you don't put bat on it. They never signal. So literally every run scored in the game is a run unless it's a wide or no ball. And the fact that I was signaling leg buys when it came off the pads instead of the bat, like, oh my God, this, this guy actually takes umpiring seriously. Like we can't let him flounder in the C division. Like, boom, we, we got to get him umpiring A division d- games immediately. That's and in my first, happens. my first year of umpiring, I was doing playoff games. I didn't do the league final. You know, there they were very good umpires and this mm-hmm. is in Quigley, New Jersey, who can consistently are graded and, and they get selected to do the final. But I was doing playoff games in my first year, which to me was like, it was confusing. Like, am I actually that good or is the umpiring that bad that I'm actually in demand to do playoff games in my very first year? Um, so, so, so yeah, some of the things you're talking about there, getting involved in the Commonwealth League, it wasn't like you had to go through this massive certification process, just the, the standard and, and the desire for quality umpiring is so low that mm-hmm. there actually is an opportunity there for somebody like you to shoot up very, very quickly if you show a strong appreciation for the laws and applying them correctly. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, just tell, tell I'm curious to hear more about that going from, again, it, it's almost, to me, it sounds like it's a very, it's the polar opposite from your acting experience mm-hmm. where you were, had all this training and didn't really have anywhere to put it to use. And in cricket, at least at a superficial level, you don't have the experience, but mm-hmm. just simple supply and demand, you, you get an opportunity, you get your foot in the door. And if you can do it right, you're shooting up pretty damn quick. That's exactly it. And what is what's wild about how and you know this how cricket works in America is that each individual league has its own owner, has its own schedule, fights for their own grounds, and tries to hold on to their little corner of what they have. So I started in the Commonwealth League and then in the World Series League that uh, that the Columbia also plays in. Some of the old time clubs still play in that league. And I was basically kept to that. I did a little bit of the New York Bangladesh League. Basically, the man who assigned those leagues knew who I was. Uh, Him and Leslie were friends. I captained a CCL team at some point in like an anniversary match. So I was getting friendly with these guys and they were putting me everywhere that I wanted to be. My only goal was to make enough money on the Sunday that I could continue to play for and then eventually be a captain of my team on on, on the Saturday and then also go to board meetings on Wednesday nights and that sort of thing. So I was getting really involved and I needed the money to keep up playing. But I found out later, so you, you, you mentioned a few minutes ago that the, that the USA CUA, the Cricket Umpires Association, has been around since the mid-90s or something. I didn't know that for four years, five years of umpiring because my leagues that I was in didn't tell me that. I literally asked. Where can I get certified in the U.S.? Oh, don't worry about that, Brian. They don't need, you know, you don't need to do any of that. Just come out, do these games. They don't really have any of those. They don't really have them. Okay, I'll go online. I'll find some stuff here. I'll buy a book. I'll learn on my own. And then a couple of years later, I guess they got themselves a website for the first time where they got a better search engine optimization on their website. And I was Googling around for the 1,000th time and found the USA CUA. Sent an email, didn't hear back the first year, didn't hear back the second year, finally yelled loud enough at the right people for long enough to be like, can I please get the number for somebody in this organization? Is it real? Will they actually certify me? I know that cricket is growing. I'm watching it happen on my TV that cricket is growing. 
where are they getting these umpires from? I finally found it. I didn't join the USACUA till 2019. And within six months of that, have met Danny Khan and these guys who have run that organization are meeting other umpires who are fully certified through the West Indies, people who have worked in the West Indies at a higher level, not just guys that came from Trinidad and have decided to do a bit of umpiring in their 60s now that they've retired from their construction job. Like those are the guys I was working with. And by the time I joined the USACUA, only in 2019, do I then find that there are people getting higher certified, there is higher level cricket around. And by that time I built up, I think enough sort of good nature within the industry that they could, there's that word industry again, that they could reach out to the people, you know, who they knew, who I knew, and I could get vouched for. And I could say, yes, I've done the CCL final twice. And I have been working with uh, Ramesh over in the New York National League as well. And they've got a couple big players that are paid to be there and stuff like that. So I did shoot up very quickly and not to throw any of the other local guys under the bus. That's, this is just what they're doing. This is how they learned what umpires were. And there's a huge difference between, let's say what, what Steve Buckner would have walked into in the early nineties, maybe, or whenever he started late eighties or nineties, whenever he started his sort of professional umpiring journey, the way they now teach umpiring is completely different than what he would have walked into. And he is a big part of changing that. He wrote one of the West Indies umpiring guides, a copy that he gave me that is kind of brilliant. And some of the language that he uses is some of the same stuff that you're hearing now in some of these more global and national trainings that I'm doing. So umpiring has changed. Cricket has changed so much, even since the time I started. Most cricket in New York was still played with a red ball and white clothes, no numbers on the shirts. Everybody come with your own jersey, wear your own hat. Doesn't matter what color you're wearing. We're all just cricketers. The umpires are going to wear their big, long butcher coats and have a nice time standing there, pointing their finger sometimes. You're not really sure what the laws are because they weren't applied evenly by those guys also. So I think cricket has changed so much in the 10 years that, that I've been part of it. And watching umpiring become more professionalized has really led to me wanting to do it professionally. By the time you are getting asked to do tournaments out of state, by the time you are getting asked to do tournaments where players are getting paid to come from out of state, especially just to play in that tournament, they do expect something more from you. And they don't teach any of that to you necessarily in those classes. The most I've learned about cricketing and umpiring is just from talking nonsense on the field with other umpires. That 20 minute rain delay for a New York National League game that I spent with Steve Buckner is the first 20 minutes of feedback I got in eight years of umpire. Eight years. And the first time I got feedback was because there was a rain delay. And Steve decided to tell me how I was doing. And I remembered every, I remembered every piece of it, you know, but now not two years later, I have weekly calls with trainers and higher level umpires in the West Indies. I am constantly in contact with the umpires here in the U S who are on a similar circuit to what I'm on, uh, the sort of minor league sort of batch of umpires is all in a group chat together. And we talk a lot. We get regular training now. I'll take a look at my thing here. I think over the last, since 2019, I've done more than 400 hours of training, both of my own accord and then also officially through the USA CUA, through USA Cricket and through Cricket West Indies. So on top of 200 games of cricket, I've done 400 hours of training over the last three years. And so that is a far cry from the umpiring system that I walked into. Um, and I, I think I just put on Twitter today or yesterday that the first batch of level one umpires through USA Cricket has just been baptized, for lack of a better word, uh, given our certificates. And we are, the idea now is that we're all part of the same team, is that there is one group who is keeping us together and that we can be regionally and nationally assigned because we all are going to be put on the same continuum, as opposed to the way cricket was, well, still is run, but was mostly run before where it's individual leagues holding on to their individual talent, be that sponsors or players or umpires or whomever. So 
I've really benefited from finally <laughs> getting in contact with the USA CUA, which the USA CUA is in a strange place right now. We can get into this now if you want, that USA cricket has been given the mandate by the ICC to take over all of the umpiring across the country. They have been given that mandate and Jamie Lloyd is in charge of that mandate. And I think he has very smartly gone to the USA CUA and gone to Danny Khan and to Jermaine and to some of the other high level umpires and assigners here and said, they've admitted that they don't hundred percent know how to do that, you know, how to fully take over a whole umpiring program. And so they're using the USA CUA and the other regional bodies as partners now. And the idea is that in a few years that will be taken over um, and the USA CUA will cease to exist because USA Cricket will be taking over all of those certifications and all of the different programs that they're going to run. So at the moment, we are encouraged to stick with our original organizations like the USA CUA or like some of the other regional bodies, um, but with the idea that we will all eventually be folded up into USA Cricket. 